What is up people, Dunny here, and today we're gonna talk about how to achieve a clean, simple, minimalist look in Adobe Lightroom. This Lightroom Minimalist Edit, otherwise known as the White Photo, is pretty darn simple to do, and it'll really make your photo stand out on Instagram against a sea of super saturated and super contrasty landscape photos. Also, make sure you stick around to the end to find out how you can win some stuff using this technique over on Instagram. This tutorial is inspired by my preset called Gimme a Low Fade. It's part of my preset pack, so if you have absolutely no interest in actually learning how how to do this yourself, you can just go buy my preset pack and then you'll have it right there for you. One click and you've pretty much got it. But before we get too far into it, I think we should probably move to a more appropriate location for this effect. Let's do it. All right, I think that makes a little more sense aesthetically than what we had before. So let's get into it. First and foremost, let's talk about what we're actually doing here. So as you can see, the photo is fairly bright and it's mostly filled with kind of white space. There's still a bunch of color in it, so it's not a black and white photo, but there is a lot of desaturation going on here and we're gonna talk about that a little later. It's also got a bit of a kind of a vintage-y faded look, which is really popular right now, not only with fashion photography, but also with lifestyle bloggers and that kind of thing. As a quick disclaimer, the photo that you have is going to have a lot to do with this. So if you can start with a photo that's already got a lot of white in it, a lot of kind of that minimalist flavor where there's not a whole lot of patterns and that kind of stuff going on in the background, you're gonna have a better starting place. However, the techniques that I'm going to show you today can be used on any photo and are gonna give you some kind of cool results so that what you're getting out of this video can apply across more than just this style. So how do we do this thing? Let's pull up a new photo and we'll get into it. So let's grab this photo of me scrolling through Instagram instead of doing whatever it was that I was supposed to be doing, a situation I'm sure we're all very familiar with. So when I took this picture, I'm hanging out in this stairwell and there's this nice big soft light from the window. It's mostly white. I'm also in all black and gray, so very, very simple. Not a whole lot going on here. And that's going to play into the edit for sure. So ultimately what we're gonna do with this shot is take it from this, to this. So the first thing that we're gonna do, the same thing that I do on every photo, is go into our basic tab and we're just gonna make some basic changes to the highlights and shadows and those kinds of things. So overall, this is a little bit dark, so I'm gonna bring up my exposure a little bit. I'm gonna take my contrast down a little bit and get a little bit of the fade going already. Since we have so much black and so much white, I'm gonna bring my highlights down a little bit. I'm gonna bring some shadows up, again, getting some more detail in those dark parts where like my clothes are, maybe about there. I think whites are doing okay. There's a little bit of clipping going on over in the window, but I think I'm okay with that. And my blacks, I'm gonna pull back down a little bit. We're gonna do some fun things with those later. Yeah, there's some clipping going on. Maybe I'll pull those up just a little bit. So there's minimal black clipping. My clarity, I'm actually gonna bring down because I want it to look kind of soft. A little bit kind of more dreamy, kind of adds to the vintage effect as well. I'm gonna pull down my saturation just a hair and then bring my vibrance up. So something I found I liked, just kind of the way that it affected the picture as a whole. I'm gonna close the basic tab and get into the tone curve. So in the tone curve, this is where we're gonna add the vintage fade to it. And this is really popular right now. You can do this across all your photos if you want. Just a quick little thing that you can do. And we're also gonna play a little bit more with some of the highlights and shadows. So the first thing I like to do is just make three dots and start to pull up right from the bottom here. And this is gonna give us our fade. And I'm gonna go pretty extreme on this one because I think it looks good. And then because we want that nice white, I'm going to actually bump things up in the mids and in the highs here. It's gonna just kind of take anything that was in that mid range and push it further into the white. This next step is something that I only do on some photos because I find it can kind of have a weird effect, but I'm gonna actually pull down the very white point so it kind of goes into a bit of a gray. What I find that does is it takes all of the whites and it kind of makes them look a little bit more uniform. So if you had a little bit of gradient stuff going on in the whites, you're gonna get kind of more of a wash of white, but because we want the vintage look, it's gonna pull the whites down a little bit. Whereas if you go the other way across like that, you're gonna take more of your kind of highlights and push them into the whites. I like doing this because it kind of has this vintage fade look, just the same as what we did with the blacks. It might be a little intense in the blacks. Let's do that. That's looking pretty good. 
Now, here's the most important part, in my opinion, of getting this white photo look. We're gonna go into our HSL and we're really gonna start to mess with things. First and foremost, I think my reds are looking a little orange, so I'm gonna pull that down a little bit. Now the saturation part of the hue, saturation, and luminance is where the real juicy stuff happens here. So you can see on this wall down by my foot and the window panes and all that kind of stuff, it's not really coming across white like this back wall is. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go into our saturation on our yellow slider and we're gonna just desaturate it all the way. Now all of a sudden that wall looks a lot more white. Now the reason that I can get away with this is because I'm not necessarily wearing anything yellow. There's not a whole lot of yellow in my skin tones. Mostly there's oranges and reds. So by desaturating that entire section, we're not really having any negative effects. You'll notice it had a bit of an effect on the flooring, but it's you know pretty minor and mostly nobody's gonna notice. And then I'm just gonna go through all the colors that we don't really need in the photo and I'm gonna just pull them down like quite a ways. Maybe not all the way for all of them, but I'm gonna take them down quite a bit. Especially if they aren't in the photo at all, it doesn't really matter. So we'll just get rid of them. Bring our green down a bunch, aqua, blue, you can see there's like a little bit of blue coming in on the lens and on my pants. So when we get rid of that, it starts to take away a lot of the other colors. I think there's gonna be some colors up on here. Yeah, you can see once I start getting rid of the purple and the magenta, it starts to look like true black. So we want as much of the photo to be black and white as possible. We just wanna save the skin tones. I'm finding that my skin is popping a little bit too much now that we've gotten everything else out of there. So I'm gonna pull back the orange just a little bit. Maybe a little bit of the reds. Just kind of fade it down a little bit. Something else I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring up the oranges on the luminance to bring up the brightness of my skin tone. It's gonna to make things look a little bit more smooth. And I'm also gonna take this yellow luminance and I'm gonna crank it way up. That's gonna take anything that had a bit of a yellow tint to it, something that was supposed to be white like the window panes, and it's just gonna make it even more bright so it's gonna seem more white in the picture. And that's pretty much where I had the photo before. This is the photo that I actually made the preset from for Gimme a Low Fade. So we can see before and after. Before, after. And one thing that you can do if you wanna kinda of take this to the next level is you can add one of the preset profiles that Adobe Lightroom has. I like these vintage profiles if you wanna kinda of give it a bit more of a fade. We're doing some of this stuff already, so it's not necessary, but if you wanna take it to the next level, you can check them out. I feel like I'm pretty happy with it the way that it is though. Now, a quick little disclaimer. If you have a photo that has more color in it and you start desaturating things in the HSL, you're gonna see some weird effects. The nice thing about this photo is that there's not a whole lot of color in it, not any important and obvious color anyway. However, when we look at this photo, everything looks pretty good if you don't know what you're supposed to be looking for, but this person's top is actually yellow. And when we apply the effect, it's now a white top. Now it worked out really well in this case. It actually looks like a white top when we pull all that yellow out. You'll notice that the blue of this person's sweater is quite a bit more faded out. That's because we've desaturated the blues, but it still looks good. It kind of fits that kind of faded out, desaturated vibe. Where I think it might feel a little bit weird is in this picture frame. You can kind of tell that it's a gold-ish picture frame. And before you can see that it's totally gold, but because I've pulled out all that yellow, you're not seeing any of the gold. Now I think if people are just glancing at this and they're not pixel peeping or zooming in or anything, that's totally fine. I really like the way that this picture turned out, but you just have to be aware of those kinds of things. If you've got strong colors in there that are obvious they're supposed to be there and you pull them out like that, you might get some weird effects going on. So what that means is that you're just gonna need to go back into the HSL panel and you're gonna need to tweak things until they look okay. So if I wanted to get a little bit of that back, I can pull my yellows up a little bit you're also gonna notice that it's gonna start doing it to the shirt. We could get deeper into how to separate these two and all that kind of stuff, but I'm gonna save that for another tutorial. So now I wanna challenge you guys to use this style in your photos, 
post it to Instagram and hashtag Dunna Minimal. And in a few weeks, I'm going to pick a photo that I really love and I'm gonna give away a gift card for Vital House Athletes Shake, a meal replacement shake that is amazing and I have every day. So get out there, take some photos, use this style, make sure to hashtag Dunna Minimal. If you want more details on the challenge, go find this photo on my Instagram feed. Make sure to follow me. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. As always, I wanna turn this over to you guys. Do you guys like this style? Do you hate this style? Are you sick of seeing it everywhere? If you had fun or you learned anything, share this video with a photographer you know. Give it a big thumbs up. It really does help to tell YouTube to share it around. If you wanna be friends, click the circle and subscribe. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. If you wanna watch another video, there's one right here. I think you'll really like it. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.